Hi everybody, how are you? It is Dr. Emily, founder of the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy, inventor of Noboso, functional podiatrist, and human movement specialist. So last week I spoke about ankle joint dorsiflexion and some of the causes for a restricted dorsiflexion at the ankle. Some of those are soft tissue. We actually focused on bony block reasons. So today I wanna to focus on the opposite me I want to focus on the opposite direction which is going to be plantar flexion so many people want plantar flexion especially those that are getting into body weight training animal flow gymnastics if you like to do calisthenics and pull-ups everybody likes to get that perfect point so let's go into why are you perhaps having some issues with plantar flexion and how many degrees plantar flexion do we really even need so plantar flexion is obviously the opposite of dorsiflexion. This is where your foot is going down or towards the ground. And this is where we see a lot of people uh, kind of seeing their point and getting a little bit frustrated. So if you are trying to point your toes, point your ankles when you're doing pull-ups and different body weight training, and that's what your ankle and your foot looks like. And you're not understanding you're saying that doesn't look like a dancer's point how come i can't get that point that's not fair is it a muscular issue is it a mobility issue does it have to do with my foot type what is it let's go into that so we need on average 50 degrees of plantar flexion at the ankle in order to walk this is how our foot becomes what's called a rigid lever. So when you do a calf raise or you are essentially on the ground and you lift your heels, the position that your foot is in right now is what's called a rigid lever. That rigid lever is formed by ankle joint plantar flexion, inversion at the subtalar joint, and an external rotation of the tibia. This is how we make what's called a closed pet position at your rear foot and your ankle. And it is locked, it is rigid, and it is stable. This is the power position of the foot. And it is how we take a step, how we release elastic energy, and how we release power. So now let's say you want to get ankle joint plantar flexion beyond that 50 degrees that is required for ambulation. Let's say you want to look like a dancer. Dancers and gymnasts have approximately 100 degrees or more in ankle joint plantar flexion. Again, 100 degrees or more. A lot of dancers will actually have up to 110, 115 degrees of ankle joint plantar flexion. Now, what's interesting is that 40% of that ankle joint plantar flexion is actually happening in your midfoot. So we need to be looking at the mobility and flexibility of not just the ankle, but also our midfoot. And then how we can achieve that perfect point so that you can have your lines and aesthetics that you desire. Now, beyond just pushing off in a power position or a rigid lever, why plantar flexion or a point is so important to dance, gymnastics, and body weight training is that it is still a power position when we are open chain. We can achieve the exact same foot to core stability that we achieve when we are on the ground and doing short foot in the air. Now the example that I like to give professionals to understand and feel what this is like is let's take a pull up. So if you have access to a bar or the next time you have access to a bar, you're going to do this little test. I want you to hang on the bar and you're going to do a pull up or execute. Um, if you can't do a pull up, then execute some sort of like a scap retraction or as high of a pull up, even if you do a halfway pull up, totally fine. Version one, you're hanging on the bar, you're obviously engaging your hands, engage your core, but relax your feet and then attempt the pull up or the scap retraction. Then you're going to see how much tension, how strong are you, what is kind of that innate strength that you can tap into, and then compare that to version two where you're going to integrate foot to core. You're hanging on the bar again, you're engaging your hands, you're engaging your core, but this time I want you to point your toes, plantar flex your ankle, and engage the muscles in the bottom of the feet. As you engage the muscles in the bottom of the feet while you're pointing your toes, you are now going to engage your calves, and I want you to engage all the way up into your core. 
So you're achieving open chain foot to core sequencing. Execute your pull up, see how you feel. Do you notice a difference in your strength? Do you feel like there's an increase in tension or stiffness in your body? That's your little test as far as how you can use uh, foot to core sequencing in an open chain, not just closed chain transfer. That really is why a point and plantar flexion is important. It is a power position in body weight sports, gymnastics, and dance, just as much as it is a power position on the ground when you are running, jumping, or taking a step. Now, what is a good point? A good point, again, would be 100 degrees or more of ankle joint plantar flexion. 40 degrees of that is happening in the midfoot. When you're looking at the foot, you want to see the top of your foot in line with your shin. So when you're pointing your toes, you're looking and you see a straight line, shin blending into foot. The other reason why point is so important in gymnastics is dance is that it is all about lines. So it is the beauty of those sports that really attracts to the eye. So it's also an aesthetic reason. So let's take a look at why perhaps you are not getting your ankle joint plantar flexion. So we know what it looks like, we know how much we want, we know that it's in the ankle and in the midfoot, but let's take a look at the ankle bones. So what we have here, let me switch real quick, what we have here is going to be your tibia, fibula, and talus. So this is the tibia, it's the larger bone, and then behind that is the fibula, so tibia, fibula, and then below that is your talus bone. Now what happens is that your talus actually moves within the ankle mortis. We have a little bit of movement. If we look at the top, if I were to take your foot and take the talus out and look straight down at the talus, the dome of the talus would actually be triangular shape. It's actually kind of the shape of my wrist. So the posterior aspect of the Taylor dome is narrow and then the anterior part of your Taylor dome is actually wider. This means that when it sits in the ankle mortis, it can move and it's going to move towards the wider part. You obviously can't take a wide part posterior towards narrow, so you're gonna shift into the direction of the wider. So when we go from a neutral foot into a plantar flexed position, you can see this is my tibia, this is my talus, the Taylor dome. Your narrow part, the posterior part, has to shift forward in order for you to plantar flex. So let's take that x-ray look again. Here we go, so we're looking and we can see my apologies. We can see that the talus, it's almost vertical. Do you see how it's vertical? And it's actually shifted forward. So you have to be able to have that articulation of the talus moving forward. That is a key element. This means that if you have a foot type, maybe you sprained your ankle, you have a pronated foot, you have rear foot pronation, you have hypermobility, you've lost centration of your talus bone in the ankle mortis. You're gonna have a very difficult time getting into a full plantar flex position because the mobility of that talus is not happening. Other big reason that we see restrictions in ankle joint plantar flexion is that there is a lack of elasticity or um, let's say uh, molding of the connected tissue. This is the ligaments, the joint capsule, the tendons on the front of the ankle joint. Look at all of those ligaments at the front of the ankle and midfoot. In order to plantar flex your foot, 100 degrees or more, you have to have a lot of tendon, fascial, retinacular, and ligamentous elasticity or lengthening to allow the foot to drop down. Now, if you are a dancer, gymnast, bodyweight athlete as a child, you can achieve that soft tissue mobility a little bit easier because we have higher hydration and the creeping effect is a little bit higher in our connective tissue when we're younger. So it is harder to achieve that plantar flexion when you are starting as an adult. Is it impossible? No, nothing's impossible, but is it harder? 100%. Yes, so it is a combination of tailor position, tailor centration, tailor mobility, and then anterior ligamentous soft tissue and capsular elasticity. It's really not a matter of strength 
per se. This means that if you're trying to plan to flex your ankles even more and you push and you push and you try to engage your intrinsics and then you start to get cramping and your curl, toes curl, that's not a perfect point. That is you trying to force it. So here's a few steps. What you can do to try to improve your plantar flexion is step one. I did a blog uh, last week on dorsiflexion. I posted a video on how to recenter your talus. Check that video out. That is what you will want to do. Recenter your talus to make sure that you have optimal tailor mobility. Two, make sure, you that, make sure you are myofascially releasing the muscles in the front of your shin. You can do this by rolling on a foam roller, take a stick or a rad rod and release the muscles on the front of the foot. And then you want to do a gentle capsular and ligamentous stretch to the muscles and tendons on the top of the foot. Now you could do this by sitting in a, a seated position, pointing your toes, and then you essentially are stretching the tops of your feet down. If you don't have the flexibility to reach all the way down, I have a link in a blog that I just wrote, barefootstrongblog.com, and that link goes to what is called a foot stretcher. This is used by ballet dancers all around the world, and that foot stretcher will help you to stretch the ligaments, the capsules, and the soft tissue on the top of the foot. Now here's my key tip. Make sure that if you are pointing your toes and stretching, you are sitting on your feet or you, you are using the foot stretcher, make sure that you are not holding that position for a very long time. Please do not stay in that position for 15 minutes straight, 30 minutes straight, because what you are doing is you are also stretching nerves, not just connective tissue, but nerves. And if you stretch a nerve for a prolonged period, you can injure that nerve. I have a very good friend and colleague that was sitting on his feet trying to improve his point. He did not listen to this video point, trying to improve his point. And what happened is he then woke up the next morning with foot drop because he injured the nerve that goes to the top of the foot. So please do make sure that you are being very wise about how you're doing this, very wise about how you are guiding your patients or your clients and athletes to get that better point. Small doses of that stretch. Yes? So again, quick summary is we need at least 50 degrees of plantar flexion of the ankle to walk. If you want to have that perfect point of a dancer, gymnast, or bodyweight athlete, you need over 100 degrees of plantar flexion. That is not a strength element. That is a fascial and joint mobility issue. Get that talus centered. Get that tendus and ligaments, um, flexibility and hydration. Do gentle stretches. And huge thing may be, if you're 40 years old and you're trying to get that point based off of your foot type and your age, you might not just get it. And I'm sorry, you might not get it, but that's okay because you don't need to have a perfect point to still achieve foot to core sequencing. You can still get tension and strength and stability between your feet and your core without the perfect point. So it's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please check out our latest blog on Barefoot Strong blog.com, barefootstrongblog.com, excuse me, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> and until next time, stay barefoot strong, stay amazing, and I will see you soon.